A binary encoder is the opposite of a binary decoder. Let's say you have four lines. Each of them can be high or low, and you want to transfer this into one line, or in this case two. So four values can be a two-bit binary number. So if this is line 0, 1, 2, or 3, then you want these lines to be 0, 1, 2, or 3. And this allows you to detect which of several options is enabled at a particular time. Like if you have multiple sub-circuits, each one of them is signaling, I want to talk to you, microprocessor. You can use fewer pins to read which one it is. So instead of having to check every single pin, you just read a binary number and that's the index and you know which one's talking to you. But what if two of them are high at the same time? Which one takes precedence. And what if none of them are high? What value do you get then? The only time this output is valid is when one and only one is on. Enter the priority encoder. In other words, each of these devices has a priority. So if, let's say this one has a higher priority, let's say 3210 is high to low priority. Two is high, so it's going to send a two. It doesn't care if zero is on. You know, two might be the timer and zero might be the USB port. The USB port can wait. The timer is more important, that kind of thing. So a priority encoder will tell you which in order of priority, device wants you. And it'll only tell you one. Everything else will be ignored if it's lower priority. And if none of them are on, it'll put out a different pin that says none of them are on. The chip I'm using is the SN74HC148N. That's a mouthful. This is an eight to three priority binary encoder. It takes eight input lines and gives you a three bit binary number. And in addition, it is specifically designed to be chained so that if you have more than eight input lines without any additional circuitry, you can just put multiple of these down, tie them together with wires or traces, obviously, and you'll have more than eight lines and, you know, three, six, nine, twelve, whatever bits that you can read. I'm, of course, using the DIP version, which has the pins four, five, six, seven, enable input, A2, A1, ground, and over here, VCC, enable output, that's an O, not a zero. I don't know what GS stands for, it's a magic pin. Then we've got three, two, one, zero, and finally the AO, and the little notch is there. So VCC and ground are obvious. A2, A1, and A0. This is your three bit binary number. This is your output with A2 being the highest order bit and A0 being the lowest order bit. So this would be four plus two plus zero is six. And that value is going to correspond to zero through seven. So zero through seven are your inputs. And then it'll give you this number as your output, whichever of these is high. Seven is the highest priority and zero is the lowest. So if five is on and two is on, it's just gonna tell you five. Now, one thing about this chip is it's active low. So if you have A2 through A0 is 110, that's actually going to be low, low, high. It's active low, so there you go. That's just how they made this chip. There may be an alternative, I don't know. I just bought whatever looked good on Mouser. GS is actually an output. When GS is high, then A is invalid. When it's low, a is valid. So in other words, GS is telling you whether or not you should use A2 through A0. For one reason or another, maybe none of the inputs are on. If none of the inputs are on, it's going to give GS high and say, you know, I'm giving you a zero or whatever, but don't read it. It's not actually zero. None of them are really on. Or if this particular chip is disabled and it's not reading, then it's also going to be high to say, I'm not reading. I don't know what I'm putting out. Ignore it. So if GS is low, then A is telling you the highest priority number input that's on. If GS is high, it's saying this chip is not giving a valid output. EI over here, high disables, low enables. So you can use this to just disable the chip entirely if you want, but it has another purpose. This is how you chain because there's also EO. EO is enable output, not enable the output, but the output of the enable signal. It's the enable signal being output. So let's say you have this chip. You have 
EI is low, so the chip is on. If all of the inputs are high, I hope I haven't flipped that around. Remember, this is an active low, so it's looking for like six to go low. I've probably screwed that up the whole video. This is a confusing chip. I hate active low, but just, just reverse it all. So when one of these signals is low, then it's going to have GS be low and say this is valid. So GS will be low. A2 to A0 will be your output. It'll tell you which one, which highest priority one is currently on. And EO will be high. EO, enable output, is to be connected to the next enable input. Because one of the inputs here is on, and it's giving a valid output, it says, okay, of all the devices everywhere, I've got one that's on. So the next chip in line is getting a disable signal to say, listen, I'm higher priority. So you put the highest priority on the first chip. So seven to zero on the first chip is priority, then seven to zero on the second, then seven to zero on the third. The first chip in the line that gets a valid output is going to tell the next chip, disable, don't give an output. And then if EI is high, it's gonna put out EO high too, so it's gonna forward that all the way down the line. But if none of them are low, if none of the inputs are on, then GS is going to be high to tell you, you're supposed to plug into GS and say, okay, none of these are on, this chip is not giving me anything useful. But EO will be low to tell the next chip you should be on and checking your input. So the highest priority chip says nothing's on for me, next one, give it a shot. And it's gonna do the same thing. If one of them is on, is low, it's going to send an EO of high to disable every chip thereafter, should there be any. And then it's going to tell its GS low to say, hey, I've got something. And the nice thing is that you don't even need to read individual GSs to be able to read the result. Let's say you have three of these chips, so it's a nine bit output. So you have nine microcontroller pins reading that nine bit binary number to see which one is on. But then you have all your GSs, you can put those into OR gates. You could have a single gate that has that many inputs or just use transistors. This is one used for discrete transistors. If you have five chips, you're not gonna find a five input OR gate, or in this case, AND gate, because they're all high. So you do AND and then AND will be low whenever one of them is valid. If every single GS is high, your AND gate will put out high and you'll say, okay, I'm no nothing is on. But if any of the GSs are low, then your AND gate is going to put out a low. And then you can say, okay, one of these chips is giving a valid response. I don't need to know which GS is because I read the whole thing as a number. You're gonna get zeros for every chip except the one that has the valid priority output. And then it's just one giant binary number. And actually, if you use a NAND gate, you just have NPN transistors as a NAND gate, then conveniently you'll get a high whenever there's something to read anyway. So there you go. So that's how you could use multiple of these. The first EI, you tie low to turn on the first chip always. Then you tie each EO to the next chip's EI. You go highest priority to lowest priority. The last chip's EO, you just don't, you just ignore. And then you put all the GSs into a giant NAND gate, which could be a NAND gate, or if it's not a chip, just use a bunch of NPNs in series. And then you need N plus one. So if in that case, if it's three chips, that's nine. So you need 10 pins to read, in this case, 24 devices to see which one's on or none of them on. So that's a pretty cool chip. I'm sorry if I confused anyone by saying high and low backwards. Active low confuses me and I don't like it. It's scary. So if you want any clarifications or want me to go over something else, I can always use this chip in something to further demonstrate. For now, I'll be seeing you.